Uh, I would like to welcome Prof. Sunaina Singh, the Vice Chancellor of uh, Nalanda University in India to start with the video about her university and then uh, her speech. You are welcome, uh, our honorary professor. It's a huge privilege and honor to head Nalanda University as Vice Chancellor. And Nalanda uh, was initiated by King Samudragupta in the 4th century BC. It continued till around 12th century. After 8 centuries of its existence, uh, it was destroyed by Bhaktiyar Kilji and thereafter it took another eight centuries of lull, of being in slumber before we woke up to the reality that this university needs to be revived and re-established. And the credit here goes to uh, the East Asian countries for uh, taking the initiative and rethinking uh, about Galanda, acknowledging its uh, uh, historical prestige and its contribution to the world. Um, the credit also goes hugely to our former president, APJ Abdul Kalamji, who mooted the idea of re-establishing Nalanda University. How, how does a university in today's world um, emerge as an institution that instills value systems that instills uh, uh, the ancient Indian knowledge tradition uh, wherein India was seen as a Vishwa Guru. My endeavor, therefore, has been to create a completely net zero campus, a uh, sustainable campus, quite a challenging task to my mind because it's not easy to create a campus that's completely net zero. Uh, perhaps it will emerge as the world's largest campus because our uh, geographic space that has been allocated to Nalanda is about 500 acres, which is humongous by itself. Today, we are a very small university because we are still, uh, uh, you know, developing in uh, a new ethos that, that goes with the ancient knowledge tradition. And at the same time, is very multipolar, futuristic, very international, very global in its uh, courses, what can the, the Western world, the European world learn from the Eastern traditions, the value systems, uh, the spiritual ethos, that's one way of looking at it. We also have the Indo-Pacific region, uh, Bay of Bengal Research Center that, that also looks at a lot of new facets. Uh, the Common Archival Resource Center that uh, we have planned uh, will be a repository of uh, all aspects of knowledge, all aspects of history, all aspects of uh, uh, how the world has emerged and um, what needs to be preserved, what has been preserved. So we connect with the libraries and uh, uh, museums and the repository across the world. That, that's the endeavor. So. Uh, in brief, it's not just the Indian knowledge system, uh, which is so relevant in terms of the spiritual um, uh, guidance that India seems to be providing. This is one nation uh, that has uh, produced so many religions. And today, the most relevant of all these is Buddhism. And that, that's one course that's, that's uh, immensely popular with students from almost 24 countries currently and uh, I think here is the ethos that we need to spread of peace and harmony and uh, how to build value systems, how to be resilient in times of crisis. Uh, I think the pandemic lessons have taught us many, many things and uh, uh, 
uh, as we move forward, uh, I think uh, uh, the current dialogue that's happening is all about higher education and the pandemic lessons. I think uh, humanity has taken a back seat. We suddenly realize or we have woken up to the reality that we need to respect nature. Thank you very much and Namaskar. Uh, thanks a lot, Dr. Sunaina, for the nice speech. And uh, now I will open uh, for questions and answers. If there are any questions Professor for Dr. Sunaina. Uh, uh, well, can I uh, uh, say a few words before we invite the yes. question? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was waiting to, uh, you know, give some highlights of how do we deal with pandemic and the future uh, university. I think it's very important uh, uh, that we are looking at uh, various aspects of uh, pandemic and the higher education. So thank you, Professor Haditi, and I must congratulate and compliment all the uh, previous speakers, the distinguished uh, uh, professors who were uh, and deliberating on different areas of uh, fu future universities. Uh, well, um, the topic, I find it very interesting because it gives us a room for thought uh, as to how do we plan a future university. So I don't have a written script or a presentation. So I'm going to um, uh, speak from my insights and highlight some uh, issues that, that needs to be looked at because if we are planning to evolve uh, uh, a new mandate or look at the world's future, you know, in terms of the multipolar global environment that we have, it's necessary, it's important, it's significant that we evolve as a future university. So that point is very well taken by Oxford. Let me now look at the pandemic and what has happened over a period of time. So with the raging uncertainties and complexities, you know, uh, coronavirus has cut a deadly path across the world, you will all agree. Separating families, friends, workmates, colleagues, because we are working long distance in many, many institutions and corporate world, collapsing healthcare system, destroying economies across the globe. Uh, this would mean that as institutions and as, uh, uh, you know, uh, donning the leadership role of institutions, I think we need to navigate on a daily basis from one decision to another. How do we do it in higher education system? across the globe where uh, institutions have also become pan-global. You know, we are no longer just restricted in our uh, national identities. I think we have moved far beyond that. You know, we have our students, over 70% of them are international and they come from all over. So I, I, it's very important that as leaders in higher education, we need to navigate afresh almost on a day-to-day uh, -day basis, the number of challenges that we tend to face. So how do we take quick decisions where we can wrestle with the challenges that emerge due to pandemic? Uh, I think it's important to look at uh, uh, how do we craft a better roadmap for ourselves? So does it require a remodeling of higher education or education per se, remodeling of institutions as future institutions? I think it would be worth to call it reimagining future institutions because given the number of challenges, uh, it calls for a future institution that is completely research-based, uh, you know, uh, which has a blended method of both teaching a uh, hybrid method as uh, uh, we have been dealing with past year or two. And also uh, all virtual platforms need to come uh, into existence. We, we cannot do without that. Now this has its negatives because the physical mode is absent and the students uh, 
you know, uh, where the quotient of empathy, the quotient of compassion, quotient of culture, you know, all this comes from a classroom. The, the culture, the etiquette, the discipline, uh, somewhere it gets, you know, this is the challenge. We don't have the face-to-face -face classroom any longer and might, it might be some time before we embark on that. So uh, we need to innovate constantly as institutions. So uh, from the opportunities that seem to emerge from the disruption, uh, do we have self-sustaining workplaces? Do we have uh, self-sustaining uh, uh, virtual uh, platforms that, that can see us through the crisis? Um, you know, how, how do we uh, get or how do we continue to stay productive in times of crisis like the pandemic? I think this is something that uh, most uh, leaders in higher education uh, look at because the number of challenges and you cannot satisfy everyone uh, because uh, institutions mean coming together of administration, faculty, the non-teaching, the staff, uh, the students, uh, the health system that we can provide, the facilities, um, not possible to keep everyone happy. So we need to pick and choose and navigate there. So we need to constantly wrestle to innovate uh, and have the courage to move forward. You know, uh, it's, it's important that, uh, uh, you know, as, as leaders, uh, we be transformational leaders there. Uh, we also need to build a purposeful future for our students. How do we continue to do that is something that institutions need to take another look at. So it's, it's a constant reinventing of the self. Uh, you know, Bernard Shaw had uh, said at one point of time that life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. I think this is cannot be more true, more applicable than the present times where we need to constantly reinvent and recreate ourselves. You know, Charles Bukowski also um, echoed the same uh, thing when he said, uh, you know, we need to invent and keep reinventing ourselves. So how do we do it at every level? As faculty, as administrators, as leaders. So we need to constantly craft a better way to deal with it. So let, let's look at as institutional leaders, uh, what, are the dis what could be the decision-making framework? You know, there has to be a decision-making framework. And that is where I thought it's, uh, we look at management of the first decision-making would be managing internal state. You know, what is it? How, how is the institution? How do we recreate it as a, a future institution? Uh, you know, uh, it, towards that goal, we need to ask different questions as to how do we move forward? Uh, get multiple perspectives on decision making. What could be the outcome is something that we need to look at because uh, institutions should be outcome based, you know, uh, systematic intelligence and systematic uh, uh, innovation should also be built into the institutions because without that, it's, it's very difficult uh, uh, to move forward. Otherwise, one would be a college and not a university. Uh, you know, this is where I thought stretching testing ourselves, reshaping the ways we approach our decision-making. Uh, for that, I think we need to have a go-to framework in front of us, where we are constantly reinventing ourselves. So the frameworks have to be uh, very firmly uh, in front of us. And we look at different challenges uh, in the during the pandemic time. And I, was looking at what could be the, the challenges that we need to learn to live with in future. You know, uh, pandemic or no pandemic, because pandemic has taught us many valuable lessons 
uh, we have learned to live in these uncertain times with huge complexities, you know, uh, uh, you know, without knowing the future of our loved ones or our own, uh, it's been a tough journey for everyone. So how do we uh, create a new generation which is positive, productive, you know? How do we shape the intellectual uh, milestone per se where youngsters are concerned? So this is very important. So we need to first uh, focus on uh, what is the primary threat to education per se? What could be the primary threat? How do we charter our young students? How do we uh, navigate through this? The second would probably be uh, what may be coming next and what do we need to plan? You know, we also need to be ready for the, uh, for the newer challenges. So if anything happens, how do we look at it? So do we have a management uh, mechanism in place? So that's another thing. And third and the most important, what are the resources that we have? Do we have a support system? Do we have resources for uh, research built in, you know, in the institution? Uh, I, I think to my mind, these are very important tools of building a future university. Uh, before I close, just to posit on what could be the leadership role here, you know, if a head of the institution or uh, the deans uh, in schools, you know, what, what do we expect? We expect a transformational uh, leaders who will demonstrate uh, specific behaviors or specific way of moving forward. And one could be uh, how can we inspire, how do we create role models uh, for successful research, for future planning? You know, role models are very important. Inspiring youngsters or your faculty is very important. So that is uh, inspirational motivation that we look at. Um, second would be intellectual stimulation, uh, which allows for uh, uh, questioning the status quo. I think this is again very important. Uh, um, and, and thirdly, I think uh, considerations of uh, the academic uh, uh, framework, curricula and research framework. Uh, how do we look at uh, the considerations of research for the next 10 years? You know, do we look at Environment is a huge challenge. The climate sciences need to be looked at. Uh, the uh, uh, probably the vanishing uh, jungles need to be forests need to be addressed. Are we losing the ecology around us? Are we losing uh, the forest uh, uh, area? Is that does that impact our health system? Or do we look at epidemiology afresh? Uh, where science and ecology is concerned, where uh, liberal arts and social sciences are concerned, where are the value systems? Do we, you know, uh, collate, look at the best practices across the globe from different countries as to what would be the cultural enhancement? How do we build a new value system uh, for our younger generation, which is more global? You know, uh, how do we create new thought leaders? I think this is very important. And uh, we need to posit on all this. And that, that's what would constitute a future university, to my mind. Thank you for giving me time. I think these were some of the insights that I wanted to share uh, uh, with uh, uh, my Oxford colleagues out here. Uh, thank you, Professor Haditi, for giving me time. If there are any queries and q and I'll be very happy. Thanks thank a lot, uh, Prof. Uh, Sunaina. We are always happy to have you with us uh, more and more. And nice to see you again. Uh, you. Now I will let uh, some of the participants, they have uh, questions, uh, you know, about this inspiring uh, presentation. Uh, I will ask Prof. Banerjee 
to ask his question, please. Uh, th thank you, sir. But my question uh, was regarding the earlier session, sir. Uh, so I, I enjoyed the uh, session uh, lecture given by uh, Professor Sunaya Singh, uh, madam. But uh, that question was posted earlier, sir. So you can take the questions from other participants. Uh, okay, then. In this case, uh, I will go uh, to... Actually, yeah. it, was to, it was to Dr. Ahmed in the earlier session. Okay, uh, shall I go to Dr. Patel? Sure, sure, sir, sure. Downey Patel? Uh, good evening, greetings, ma'am. Uh, I'm Dr. Dwani from uh, National Forensic Sciences University. Uh, I really enjoyed the motivational, uh, inspirational speech that ma'am you have given us. Being an academician, uh, apart from education, because we are talking about education in future, I would like to have some insights from you that how ma'am we can inspire our students to be in this pandemic, to have a mental being and uh, trusting us on the education front because as such as you know ma'am we have limited portion of time to teach them educate them for any particular course because of this pandemic we are trying our best to impart the education through virtual classes but my question specifically involves the mental pressure the students are handling which makes them realize that they're missing certain classroom education how, as an academician, should we react to these type of situations? Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for that. That's a very nice question. And I, uh, I would say that uh, as a young faculty yourself, you know, uh, it's important that we uh, make our students enjoy their studies. So make it light, but tight, you know. So you, you have to give them the material, the resources, and 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 snippets of it, you know, uh, give, I, I find very lengthy, elaborate talks and uh, documents that are sent to them in the blended mode. Uh, you know, as it is our students, they are also trying to deal with pandemic, you know, loss of friends, you're not able to get out of the home. There are a lot of psychological issues and youngsters have more energy uh, than anyone else, you know, so that energy needs to be unleashed and that can be done through uh, knowledge systems which are lighter, which also call forth for any new ideas that you're inculcating a research sense also. Ask them if there are parallels in like this in music, whether they can find, you know, if, if we are talking about uh, for example, if you're talking about uh, uh, climate, supposing, or you're talking about medicine, uh, maybe you can ask them as to uh, what, what are the other alternate methods that grandparents used in their places, whether that is, can we think of it from a medical perspective, would that be right? Does it have a clinical evidence? Does it have a laboratory this thing or is it just a kind of you know small or maybe you can look at it how do we lighten the burden so we have to uh, have different methods of dealing it and not just be restrictive to an area that we are handling it so we should learn to uh, disengage them and engage with them so it calls for remodeling you know it calls for remodeling but the times are tough and uh, you cannot put pressure on students about their grades and evaluation and things like that. You know, ask them to write a term paper on uh, their own idea of a utopian world. You know, what, what, how, how would they look at world? How, what is their idea of utopia or a better world? So it needs to be more creative rather than restrictive. Uh, to my mind. So we need to have new knowledge paradigms built. Uh, thank you very much for this answer, Prof. Sunaina. And I totally agree with you. And I suggest that uh, Dr. Doni Patel uh, 
read about the micro learning where you give the students what we call nuggets, nuggets of information because we are not in the information age anymore. We are in the digital age and the student can have the information in the databases and Google and many places. So in order to engage him, think about the micro learning and give him the learning and bites. And I wish you all the good luck. And we are glad to have such a young and the new educators with us in this uh, debate. Uh, now you. I will, you all come anytime. Uh, now you. I will let Dr. Uh, Akansha to ask her question, please. Hello, ma'am. A uh, beautiful talk. Uh, I must admit that uh, that whatever you talked about was in my mind throughout this debate. Uh, yes, uh, it is very important. As you said that, yes, it took us a pandemic to understand that less is more. It took us a pandemic to, uh, to understand uh, the importance of living in a community. It took us a pandemic to understand the uh, uh, relationships and uh, so it took us a pandemic to to rediscover ourselves as individuals uh, I and, uh, and even we uh, learned in some good universities but we were not able to deal with the problem uh, what do you think what kind of value system should uh, be created and should be incorporated at uh, in education system so that our children, our young, young generation, the coming generation copes up with the problem in a better way than we did. Also, there is this common notion that value system is created during the formative years of a child when he or she is in school. Do you think, uh, do you agree with that uh, totally? Um, uh, if not, can we can we have an extension or do you think that it is it, it is possible to mold student behavior and attitude even at the university level thank you so much ma'am this is my question thank you akansha uh, uh, yes i firmly believe that uh, uh, we learn we need to constantly keep learning we also need to constantly keep unlearning if you want to relearn you also need to unlearn some things which may not have added value to your life. So recrafting is very important. Uh, you know, uh, one doesn't just learn in childhood. That's the beginning of learning. So you're constantly evolving. So at a higher education level also, it's possible to evolve and build your value system. It depends on how the faculty and the students, the dynamic interaction you know, um, so I firmly believe that I, we all keep learning even at this stage. So uh, state of learning should be on. Now the other important thing is there's so much to learn from sports. Uh, sports teaches us to be competitive. It teaches us to take failure with equanimity. You know, take a look at sports. I think that's one value I think we have forgotten to uh, speak about. We fail in a game, be it a cricket match or a football, but they come back for the next national or next state level. They're still preparing even after failure. They don't give up. The sportsmen are constantly able to prepare. You know, they're not, they, they, we don't hear about depression there. We don't hear about failure impacting them. You know, they, for the next match, they are again at it. So I think it's very important that we learn that, you know, failure is a part of life. Life is not going to be an easy ride. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, never perfect. So we need to learn to live with imperfections. We learn, need to learn to live with failure. So what is necessary is the resilience that you draw. It's, it's like a well within you. You never know how much you can draw. When you emerge out of a crisis, at times you wonder, oh, how did I survive that? I thought I'm going to give up. But you do. Because we draw from that inner reservoir, you know, of energy, of resilience. I think that needs to be, that inner reservoir should be always active. You know, we, we may be annoyed, unhappy, failed in something, but don't give up. Keep at it because that's very important. That's another value that, that would help. So 
uh, I find these days we give up very easily. You know, we are uh, depressed easily. We are uh, unhappy and dis discontent seems to be looming large. I think this pandemic, as you rightly pointed out, has taught us many lessons. It has taught us to survive. You know, and we are thankful that life is still with us, you know, and our loved ones. So I, I, I think uh, the art of being thankful, the gratitude is very important. Humility is very, so these are values that need to be, you don't have to learn only in childhood or in school. We constantly evolve this. So never forget anybody who has done you a good turn or helped you or held your hand even for a moment, that value system will take us a long, long way. And as far as Professor Haditi was pointing out on micro learning, you know, these days we talk about capsule programs, yeah. you know, quick learning and how much can you get in a capsule form? So I think that also gratitude is again a capsule form. It stays, it does well to us, uh, to our system. Yes, I hope I've answered you. Well, thank you very thank much, you. Professor Sunaina. And the last question will go to Borov Sonali. Borov Sonali. Hello, ma'am. I have a very simple question, a doubt also. If uh, such financial constraints continue due to pandemic, is there any chance that students from ordinary family will be soon deprived? from higher education to meet other challenges of life. Especially, uh, I, I am, uh, my concern is about uh, female students. Do you feel like, like me or uh, this is my uh, irrelevant question? You can explain. No, 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 it's not at all irrelevant. It's a very good question. We are talking about minority, we are talking about gender, we are talking about the deprived sections of society who may not be able to. So this is a very relevant question. Uh, given the financial constraints, I think it's very important that uh, uh, nations build support systems, you know, which I think a lot of uh, Countries already have that in their education system. And I think even India is doing very well. We have so many measures uh, where uh, gender is concerned, deprived sections are concerned. So I, I'm not disheartened. You know, the financial constraints will, um, will, we will have to deal with given the economies um, uh, not doing so well. You know, it, it might be a challenge. But I don't think government is going to pull back some of the schemes. Uh, I think secondly, we also need to look at what are the fellowships available anywhere, you know? So we need to be alert and uh, uh, be flexible in our choices. If I want something here and now and wherever I am in my comfort zone may not be possible. You know, we need to be flexible in our thinking, in our approach, uh, look for fellowships, do well, prove your merit. I think the world is always there to help those who seek out. So seekers are never at loss, you know? So um, I don't think we should be disheartened there. Thank you very much, Prof. Sunaina, for the nice presentation and the encouraging uh, answers. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, very much. Uh, I look now, forward to you yeah. sometime.